Welcome back to the studio. And for this quick topic, I thought I would address a question that seems to be getting a little bit of traction on the on the reply to the Maxwell video, and that is, what the hell does cobalt do in a, in a lithium ion battery anyway? What role does it play? And so, uh, I thought we'll do a really quick quick topic on this to to try and get people to be able to understand that. So I have a graphic here uh, that shows what a battery cell looks like in general and I'll walk you through the components, all the components in a Tesla cell and then we can talk a little bit about what cobalt does specifically. Okay, so here is a uh, Tesla cell and on one side there you see that you've got a copper foil that's covered in graphite and then on the opposite side you have a piece of aluminum foil that is covered with NCA. Well what the hell is NCA? Well NCA stands for nickel cobalt aluminum and it's an oxide layer that's applied uh, to the um, uh, aluminum in the form of a paint uh, and then you have the separator layer, which is just that it's, it keeps the NCA layer and the graphite separate. It's a uh, piece of specialized plastic that will allow, it, it's, it, it, uses a, uh, it uses a property, property called microporosity. And it, what it does is it allows the lithium ion to pass back and forth from that NCA layer to the graphite without um, uh, allowing the positive and negative sides of the battery to touch. So that's really all you need to, to know about that. And then you have the electrolyte, which is also a paint or a paste that is applied to that separator layer. And then all of that is wound up into the, uh, into the battery. Now, the way that this works, just in real simple terms, again, we can do a future video that maybe goes into this in greater detail if you guys want me to. Um, the way that this works is, is that that lithium ion travels from the NCA layer to the, the graphite. Now, how does it do that? Well, when, it's, uh, when, it's at, when the battery's at rest in its discharged state, the lithium is bound up in that oxide layer. Now, the uh, nickel and the cobalt are what are called transition metals. Now, what that means is, is that the electron in the electrons in their outermost shell can vary, and the transition metals don't care whether or not the number of electrons in that valence shell varies uh, or not. They're they're happily um, uh, existing in in that state, plus or minus. So knowing that, what winds up happening then is with the lithium ion, when it's with its electron, it's bound up in that NCA layer. Well, when you apply a charge to the battery and the electron gets stripped off, now remember the nickel uh, and the cobalt, they, they'll just give it up. They don't, they don't really they don't really care whether or not they'll, they'll happily allow that electron to, to leave. Well, the um, ion of lithium isn't happy with, in that matrix without its electron. It wants to then seek that out. It wants to go away then from the, uh, uh, the, the oxide layer. And it does so then by traveling through that electrolyte and through that um, separator layer and then the lithium becomes lodged in the graphite. Well, so where did the electron go? Well, the electron was basically hauled out of the battery under uh, un, un, while it was being charged and the electron was then deposited in the graphite. So the lithium has now traveled to the graphite layer, lithium ion has traveled through the, to, to the, through the separator to the graphite layer, where it is now lodged in that graphite layer separate from its electron. And the only path that the electron has now to return to the 
NCA layer to that oxide layer is outside of the battery through that circuit, through a load, all right? And without a load, it's in its charged state. It's ready to uh, discharge. When you apply a load, then that electron travels through your load, back through to the NCA layer, and the lithium ion then travels back through the separator layer and back into that NCA layer where it's happy. And now the battery is uh, at a resting state or again discharged, waiting to be recharged. Okay, so what the hell is a cobalt for? This is really simple. The cobalt is actually in that oxide layer for the exact same reason that cobalt is in a drill bit. And that is, is that it's added to the alloy, in this case an oxide layer, but it's added there to impart a strength to the metal. It allows it to be able to take stress. Every time you remove that lithium ion from that NCA layer, from that matrix, it creates heat and expansion and all of, of, of that, it, it takes its toll on that NCA layer and it will eventually tear it apart. And so, very simply, what the cobalt does is when the lithium ion leaves that structure and it leaves its hole, it allows that structure then to remain intact. So, pretty basic. So how do they determine how much cobalt is enough and what ratios to use when they're trying to decide uh, how to create that layer? It's all just testing. They test these various components in various stress by charging them to different uh, voltages and seeing how they react. And they're looking for a wide variety of different things. Not only how much heat does it create, but also uh, how much gas is uh, created within the cell. Uh, is there anything that they're going to need to be aware of as far as um, trying to figure out how to allow the battery to, to outgas? Uh, they're looking at how the expansion and contraction of the cell tears apart the various components. That's also something that we can maybe cover in a future video, and that is how, over time, what, what is the mechanism by which the lithium ion cells uh, degenerate. But uh, again, we're talking about the, the cobalt. Well, so by varying the amounts of, uh, of cobalt in the ratios uh, from uh, with the nickel and the uh, cobalt, they discover that certain formulas will lend themselves to the batteries either uh, being able to be charged to a higher voltage without tearing the cell apart, or that they will be able to go through a certain number of increased discharge charge cycles without tearing the battery up. And again, so you're looking for that happy place in between. You want enough voltage to be in the cell to be able to uh, be you, have it do something useful for you, uh, but you also don't want those voltages to be so high that the battery tears itself up. So with that and experimentation, Tesla's actually been able to get the amount of cobalt that they use in their battery to what's described as almost nothing. Now, the, the latest information that I've gotten on, on all of this is, is that that almost nothing is somewhere around 5%, 8%, somewhere in that almost nothing region. Um, folks that are in industry may chime in in the comments section and correct this and tell me, you know, if they, if they know for a certainty can back up that information what those percentages are. But let me close this out by, by mentioning why knowing those percentages is so important. So the um, uh, nickel is derived from an ore called laterite. And laterite, depending on where it's mined on the planet, has various compositions. 
some of it higher in nickel, some of it higher in cobalt. The general range for laterite, you wind up with 1.5%, 2.5% of nickel in the laterite, but you also wind up with a variability of between uh, one tenth of 1% and 1.5% of cobalt in the laterite. Well, if I were an investor, I'd be keenly interested to know what percentage Tesla is using of cobalt to nickel. Because you can probably find a mine that already has close to those ratios. And so in that instance, it's a one-stop shopping for your oxide layer for the most part. And so that, to me, I would be very interested in finding that rather than trying to source my cobalt and being assured that it wasn't coming from the Congo. So right now, there's a huge problem with uh, cobalt not being able to be adequately traced as far as its origins. And this becomes a problem because some of the richest concentrations of, of cobalt, if that's actually what you're just trying to mine as a substance, happen to be in some of the countries that value human life the least. And we have to go into this trying to be very responsible about where we obtain these materials to get the batteries and also moving forward that we ensure that we support manufacturers that are able to reclaim almost all of these materials when the battery reaches its end of life. That is the responsible thing to do moving forward and we just have to ensure that as consumers that we do enough research to find out which companies are honoring that. Currently, Tesla seems to be, Tesla slash Panasonic, seems to be honoring that better than just about any other company that I've been able to look at. When you look at companies that have very high percentages of cobalt in their battery, in other words, those percentages that exceed the percentages of uh, cobalt that is present in intrinsic copper mining and intrinsic uh, nickel mining, then you wind up questioning where this extra cobalt is coming from. So that's about it. Uh, that's what cobalt does in the uh, lithium ion battery. It simply does exactly what it does in a drill bit or any other alloy that needs to be strengthened. It's added to the nickel so that the layer can remain intact at higher voltages and with an, an increased number of charge discharge cycles. Alter the amount of cobalt that's in the battery doing that and you have to try and replace it with something else that will do the same job.